Hi everyone! So today I have a super special unboxing. I placed an order from Bungu Box about two weeks ago, I think. Um, it was a kind of a crazy situation for them, so it took a while to ship, but once it did ship, it was here um, within two days. So DHL, awesome shipping for the win. So anyway, let's get into this box because we got some super special stuff. Okay. So, first things first, we have this cute little note. So, this is just a thank you note, and the ink here is Fujiyama Blue, and that's important for reasons you will soon find out. And just their little business card, and some inks. They have really interesting ink bottles. The other thing about Bungu Box is they do a lot of custom pens with, especially with Sailor, but um, all of these pens are original pens that they've commissioned. Um, Bungu Box is a lot of that, so if you're interested in getting super unique kind of once-off fountain pens, Bungu Box is a great place to look. Okay, so the first thing in the box is this writing pad by Yamamoto. The paper is bank paper. Um, and it is plain, but it comes with a, like a pencil board or a grid guide inside. Um, I've heard really great things about bank paper, but I've never been able to try it. Um, so I might try this out later in the video. We'll see. So these two items are inks by Bungu Box. They have their own ink line. So I got Fujiyama Blue and 4B. I'll swatch these, take them out of the box, and swatch them later. Fujiyama Blue is a really pretty light tealy blue color, and 4B is a dark blue, almost a blue-black, but it's, at least from the photos, it looks like a really rich blue-black, which I always like. So I'm hoping it's a really pretty shade, um, but I would like it to be different than um, Sailor Manyo Kikyu, which is my sort of go-to blue ink. So we'll try those out in a bit. I am so cutting out that picture and putting it in my collage book. Anyway, this is supposed to be a super bright pink. I'm ho actually hoping that it's neon pink, but if it's not, that's fine. Um, I, I really love Sailor Inks. I didn't realize that they made that, so that's super fun. Oh, and they even tell you how to open the box. That's cute. So push the semicircle above the gold Bungu Box logo, then open the box. So that would be here. Oh, 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 that's cool. And then open the box. Okay, I'm opening the box. Wow, oh my goodness, that's awesome. <laughs> that's silly. Okay, um, so the bottles come with a little description. So this is Fujiyama Blue. So this is Fujiyama Blue, and that's the high heel shoe shape that they were talking about in their bottles. That's cute. This is kind of a sh what the Fujiyama Blue shade looks like. So, wow, that's awesome. That's the bottom of the bottle, if you're interested. And it says, ink tells more here, and it says Bungu Box there. So, that's nice. That's so cool, super cool. Yeah, so 4B is labeled as blue black. <laughs> it's got four Bs on it, that's cool. And you can't really see the shade very well straight in the bottle. So we'll swatch that. That's fun. So let's go ahead and get the sailor ink out since we're opening things. Okay, this one also has an insert. 2022 spring edition Bungu box. So that's super cool. I didn't realize this was that new. And it, I, I think it might be neon based on the bottle. We'll see though. So I will swatch all those momentarily. But now for the main event. This is my Bungu Box Original Fujiyama Blue Pilot Custom 823. So Pilot uh, very rarely we'll do a, a special color 823 for, from what I understand, 
stores that are having an anniversary with a zero. So 10, 20, 30 year anniversaries for stores. So there were 20, uh, excuse me, 200 of these pens made um, and Bungu Box sold them through um, basically an online lottery system. Um, and I managed to, to get in to, um, I managed to get it in order. So um, yeah, that's what the, the weight was about. And let's, actually the box is really pretty too. Unfortunately, I can't cut this apart and put it in my collage book because I always keep the boxes for resale just in case, but I might take a photo or scan it or something, let's see. So, here is our pen. Okay, regular paperwork. And so this says Bungu Box 10th Anniversary Custom 823 Fujiyama Blue. And it has that little logo again. I am definitely going to scan or take photos of those. All right. And here is the pen. We have fluff. Ignore the fluff. It's a really beautiful color. So it says Fujiyama Blue on the cap band, Bungu Box, 10th anniversary, and there's an engraving of Mount Fuji there. I did get a size, a nib size of fine because that's my preferred pilot um, size. Although they did sell an, a fine, a medium fine or an MF, FM, maybe fine medium. Um, they did sell a fine medium uh, option, but it was sold out by the time my slot came up, so I wasn't able to get one. But that's okay, I'm still happy with an, an F. The body feels really sturdy. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't feel cheap. I mean, it does feel like it's the same material as the other 823s, and it's still extruded or formed plastic, I think. But it's a really interesting blue shade. It's it's tealy, bluey, and then these are kind of a cobalt or cerulean blue color on the grip and the finial. So here's the nib. I really hope you can see this. And so the nib, it's very small, but it has the Bungu Box logo. It says Bungu Box 14K F in Japan. So yeah, that is the Bungu Box 823. So the 823 is a vacuum filler, a vac filler. So you unscrew the top and pull up to create a vacuum, push back down while the ink is in the ink bottle. And the suction releases and pulls ink in through the nib. So that's how you fill these. If you want to close it back up, you can. However, if you close it back up and leave it, the ink will not flow to the nib. That's why people like to fly with um, vac fillers because they have a seal. Usually you can seal them off. And this is 14K rhodium plated, by the way. So silver trim. Okay, so you know the deal. I'm gonna swatch out these new inks. I'm gonna put them in my ink book and I'm also gonna try out this writing pad and see how the paper is. Um, I think this little insert is really interesting. I've seen Yamamoto publishing this statement in a lot of different places lately, and they're basically saying that COVID-19 really impacted the paper industry and it's causing them to cut back and cut costs so that they can keep working. Um, so, they said, in order to preserve the obscure gems of writing papers that are on the brink of possible extinction, Yamamoto Paper has curated our favorite writing papers and turned them into writing pads for your enjoyment. We hope you will enjoy the wonderful feeling of writing on these papers as it may only be a matter of time before they disappear forever. And that's super sad. Um, so I think what they're doing is taking their paper stocks and trying to increase revenue 
by creating these paper pads, which is fine by me. So what I'm going to do is use my Kakimori Steel Dip Pen Nib, um, which I use all the time for my swatches. And I'll do a swatch in my ink book, and then I'll do a swatch on the Mitsubishi paper. So again, this is Fujiyama Blue. It's meant to be a tealy blue-green shade, and it's meant to match the fountain pen. And so just if you don't know my swatching style, I like to write out the name and I'll do a little cross hatches and a scribble just to get a sense of the shading. And I'll do a, some thin lines and some thick lines and then I'll just write if I have a sample or a bottle. Although I have a bottle and I wrote sample. And the other thing I'm gonna do is just see what it does on this bank paper. Just like. It's definitely a super smooth paper, like, wow, it's really nice. It is definitely drying faster than Tomoe River, which is in this notebook. Next, I'm going to try 4B. This is the ink I was really excited about. I don't want to get, um, I don't want to get my hopes up too far, but I do love a good blue-black. And I don't know if you can see the difference in line weight here. That's not the pen, that's the ink. This ink is wetter than this ink. So if you do all your swatches with the same pen, it's a little easier to see a wet ink versus a not wet ink. I'm gonna be wetter, that's bad. It's still a really, really nice shade. And there's definitely some sheen happening, although Neither of them sheen a ton, actually. This one has a, more of a halo than a full-on sheen, but it's not totally dry yet, so we'll, we'll come back to that. And this is our last ink, the Sweet Pink Love. Okay. Oh yeah, that is neon. This is my favorite fountain pen for writing. It's not necessarily my all-time favorite. So it, when I write on it, it feels grabby. It's the only way I can describe it. Even though the paper is completely smooth and has no texture, it feels like the pen gets... It's not that it gets stuck on it. It's like it's not... It doesn't have enough lubrication to move slow, slowly. I don't know, it's hard to explain. So this is my Prime Minister's Consolation Special Gift Sailor Pro Gear Fountain Pen, otherwise known as the Sakura Nagare design. And this has ancient copper ink in it, and it's a medium nib, so it's a little bit broader than this one. This pen definitely is happier on this paper. So yeah, probably not good for a fine nib. Um, not terrible, but not as comfortable to write on as um, Tomoe River still. However, from an ink performance perspective, it's fairly comparable. So actually let's do that before I do more writing on this paper. So here are our three samples and I'll actually hold this up a bit closer for you. So we have Fujiyama Blue on the top, 4B in the middle, 
and sweet pink love on the bottom. Now, the only real color difference I'm seeing is, and you probably can't see on screen, the sweet pink love looks more neon and brighter on the Tomoe River paper than it does on the bank paper. But the, and the, the 4B look, looks slightly greener. Actually, maybe that's the difference. The Bungu, the uh, Fujiyama blue also looks a tiny, teeny tiny bit greener. And the 4B has kind of a cooler hue to it, I think. They both look good though. I think the writing experience is still better on Tomoe though, but I'm picky. So this is an extra fine nib by Franklin Kristoff, and this is one of my finest nibs that I use regularly. So, yeah. so interestingly, this pen felt a little nicer to write with than this one, which was a Twisby Vac Mini. That's interesting. And this one, and that might be down to the ink as well. This pen is my European Bee Eater Sailor Pro Gear Slim Mini. Also one of my favorite fountain pens. I keep inked pretty, pretty regularly. It is a medium fine by Sailor. So this, this ink is Monteverdi Fire Opal, and this ink is Monteverdi Olivine. I do actually think that the Olivine was slightly nicer to write with, but I think that is the pen rather than the ink. The Fire Opal tends to be a little bit dry, and the Olivine is less dry, although I wouldn't consider it super wet either. So yeah, this is... Yamamoto bank paper. I've been dying to try it. Sorry about the lighting in here. Hopefully that helps. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing the Fujiyama Blue Pilot Custom 823. It is beautiful. I love the color. Uh, I'm going to be inking this up and playing with it on my own later. So yeah, I would be interested to hear in the comments if you would ever spend extra money on a special unique fountain pen. I have found myself doing this twice in the past month. So I bought the Fujiyama Blue fountain pen at the beginning of the month, I think. And then I, I ran into this pen and bought that one. So I kind of blew the budget this month. So what about you? Would you put money down on a, an expensive, super unique fountain pen? Or do you think it's not worth it? Let me know in the comments. It was great to see you here again on the channel. And I will see you soon. Bye.